Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and this is my Sunday chat. Well, it's been another busy seven days, and I've been out and about, despite the lockdown, doing my hours daily exercise and taking with me my camera and trying to go to as many interesting but local places as I can. And nobody's really defined what local means. Um, you are permitted, of course, to go in your car uh, a shortish distance, two, three, four miles, in order to be able to get out into the countryside, to be on your own, self-isolating and keeping your distance from everybody else and also giving you doing some exercise and getting some fresh air and clearing your mental health. And so I have managed to do that in the local area. Although occasionally I do get some people who say, oh, Richard, you shouldn't be out and about. Well, I think we're slowly now that we're past the peak in the coronavirus, we are going to see a, a slight easing of the rules. And it is my intention to go just that little bit further afield because I'm running out of places to go. Anyway, let's look back and see some of the exciting things that I've been up to in the previous seven days. So we've had bluebells out in the environment and they've been magnificent. A lot of people have not been able to get out and see them. So I took my camera to try and find some and bring them to you. There's some just down here actually. But without the light on them, it's... Uh difficult to make them out. Let's see if I can get through here. At least I've actually got to see them. Here we go. I do love bluebells and I have missed the opportunity to see lots of them, but I'm so thrilled that I did at least get to see some. Another thing that a lot of people, it seems to me, are doing, and we know this from every time you go to the supermarket and you look for flour, which is all sold out, is making bread. Everybody seems to be at it. And I thought, well, I'm gonna go and have a go. So I gave it a little try, and actually I was uh, surprised by the results. I'm gonna get my hands all covered in the yuck. So here we go. Just gonna pour this in, and as I pour it in, I'm gonna keep one hand going. Now, I am a novice, I'm not a master of this. I do not know if there are better ways of doing this, and I'm sure there are, and there'll be professionals possibly, or people who make this all the time watching me and thinking, oh Richard, you're doing this completely wrong. As I say, this is number seven of my loaves. So, um, however, the number six has been my first successful one, and I'm just going to see if I can repeat the process. And there it is in the oven. It's looking absolutely amazing, and I almost don't want to go and give it to her now. It's, it's so nice. I want it for myself. But here it is. This is it. And it looks and smells delicious. Well, I must shut that because that's so hot. Well, now I've been bitten by the bug. I don't want to go and buy shop-bought loaves ever again. It is so easy. And having an Essie, uh, one of these wood-burning stoves with a, a beautiful oven, that sort of heats in a more natural way than gas or electricity, I, I, I just think it complements making bread. So I'm, I'm going to carry on doing that. Also, getting out onto the, uh, onto the downs and into the countryside is fascinating this time because, well, we've got the spring exploding into blossom and two of the trees, two of my favourite springtime trees, actually, or shrubs, you might say, are hawthorn and elder. Here we go. Look at this. Hawthorn, 
the blossom of Hawthorne. We're coming into May. It's the uh, end of uh, April as I film. And it's now the time when the Hawthorne starts coming out into blossom. Earlier in the year, uh, if you've been following me, you would have heard me talk about the, um, the blackthorn. Uh, you know, the plant that you get, uh, or the shrub that you get, uh, or the tree even, that you get uh, sloes from. This is now Hawthorne. And it's a very delicate petal that you get the blossom, very delicate. And it's sort of peppered with the, the little, um, I don't know if they're called the stamens or whatever they are on the inside. And no doubt the bees will be out here and thriving on them. It's absolutely beautiful. Hawthorn often called May because that's the month that it becomes incredibly abundant and it sprinkles over the, uh, the hedgerows like snow. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And that was a path that I've never been up. I think one of the things this lockdown has enabled me to do, or forced me, I suppose, and that is to go more locally and study some places that ordinarily I would think, ah, no, that's, nobody's gonna ever be interested. But of course, actually, there is so much on our doorstep that we don't often realize. So that has been really, really good. Something else that um, I often do, and I do it on a daily basis mostly, and that is keep a diary. And I shared some of my diary keeping and my journals with you a few days ago. Dad's in an advanced stage of um, dementia at this time. He doesn't really know who he is. He doesn't know who we are. My sister occasionally would come and help, but it, at this point it was mostly me and I'm fighting uh, Margaret, who didn't understand it, and uh, was, she wanted to help, but she was no help. She would leave Dad unattended in a room, and um, he would call out for her, and she would deliberately ignore him, occasionally slapping his legs, because she felt he was just being naughty. Anyway, I stayed the night here, so this is Monday, 17th of October, 2016, and, and this is in, in, in uh, pen and ink. Woke up at Dad's. As usual, night of calling out and wet beds. I pulled off the wet sheets and nightgown, thrust them straight into the washing machine, and later, after an, this is in the middle of the night, another call out moved the washed garments, garments into the dryer. At least I was on top of it all. I whipped out of the dryer later and folded it up away before Margaret could get up and iron them. It's not the easiest thing, keeping it up, and some days I do actually forget. Sometimes I try and go back and write up the few days that I've missed. Other times in the early part of this week, I was um, having to condense a whole week into one entry because pretty much in the early stages of lockdown, everything was pretty much the same. I would got into a routine of doing my live readings, the Vogue show, and going out very, very locally whilst we were working out how this lockdown was going to go. And so it, it became quite limited. A place that I sort of went to by accident this week was on the Shoreham Estuary. I was actually gonna go into Shoreham Town and see what it's like, see what shops were open during the lockdown and how things were slightly easing. And as I crossed the bridge over the River Ada, I noticed the tide was out. Heading back now, you can see the great big uh, bridge going across the road bridge. Just come underneath the bridge. It's, it's quite windy, so apologies if you're hearing it on the microphone, although I do have a, a special little gadget that I, I use, namely a tea strainer, which I hide the microphone in. I've got a, a mad dog coming up to attack me now. Hello. Hello, mad dog. There's some some people down there, not quite sure what they're doing. Uh, looks like they're sort of fishing with a rope or maybe they've got a magnet or something, one of these magnets that you throw in. I just thought, I'm, I'm walking, this is just amazing. I'm walking on this beach with all these strange incrustations down on the, uh, on the stones. 
really fascinating to be able to walk out there amongst all the crustaceans, the barnacles and the cockles, and also those old boats, the, the fishing boats that seemed a little bit um, forlorn, stranded if you like, when the tide is out. I'm sure they look fantastic bobbing on the water when the tide comes in. Talking of water, an interesting place in Ferring is a little stroll along the Ferring Rife. Rife is a weird name, isn't it? It doesn't seem to be in any of the local dictionaries and things like that, but it must be a common name to the area, a bit like Twitten, that people used to know and it's stuck. And the Ferring Rife is this stream that takes, its, uh, takes the spring water from the downs down to the sea and I had a nice little stroll along there getting down to the beach. There is actually a little, uh, a little pathway so you can get down. Oh that's good. Here we go. You can get down to the water's edge here. And I imagine <laughs> dog walkers with dogs who like to splash about in the water can get down and and uh, do all their stuff. I don't know what uh, if there's any fish and what fish does if fish swims in uh, fresh water that's going down to the sea. I wonder if they get a bit confused when they actually come to the other end. They come down the, the rife and then there's the salt water which must make life a bit awkward for them. Perhaps they suddenly turn around and and go back up. Very invigorating and all of this I must say it's very lucky to have this. You know I thought started to think that being in um, on a coastal town the 360 area that I could walk would be limited because 180 degrees of that would be actually the sea but all along the coast it's all very it's very samey but also very different, if you see what I mean. The shingle beach is all the same, but actually all along it's just subtly different. There are nuances which I've been trying to pick out with my camera. So that's been this week. Next week, well, who knows? Except that, as I said at the beginning, I do want to try now, as we're beginning to slowly ease the lockdown and be a little bit more open, and we've gone past the peak, still working solo, unfortunately, but going a little bit further away from home. Not too far, not great long journeys, but I've got a few ideas lined up. Um, we'll have to see how the water is, so to speak, um, and suck it and see. So that will be good. I'm also still doing my readings. I've uh, been doing them in the morning. Now that may change. I may push my readings, my live readings. We're reading Narrowboat at the moment by LTC Rolt and we're pretty much halfway through that. I want to continue that. It's been fascinating. But I may push that into the afternoons, probably about two o'clock. Watch out for messages either on Facebook or on YouTube or I'll release another video to let you know when uh, because um, I think that uh, I need the mornings to go further and, and get back in time. So that may happen. I'm also still doing the Vogue show. I've taken the weekend off from doing that. That's on the Vogue show channel. The information will be in the description. Um, but that will carry on Monday to Friday, uh, possibly at the weekend, next weekend as well. So maybe another seven days. People have been sending in their videos, which has been absolutely brilliant. Thank you for that. We do that at eight o'clock in the evening, British summertime at the moment on the Vogue Show YouTube channel. And it's live and you can call in and have a chat with me. So do check that out as well. Anyway, that's that. That's it really for today's video. Thank you very much for uh, joining me. If you haven't catch, caught up with any of the videos I've shown today, then they will be on, obviously. Uh, you can check them out. And I look forward to seeing you when I'm out and about on the next one. Take care, look after yourself. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, become a patron, support what I do, and I'll keep making the videos. Till next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye.